What's up designers? My name is Jimmy and this is how I designed my levitating toaster. Alright! So in the industrial design world, I believe there are a couple of very iconic products that I think every industrial designer should try to attempt to design at least once in their industrial design career. A lounge chair, a coffee table, a fan, which I did design and I showed you guys exactly how I did it. The link should be down below. Download that 3D file for absolutely no cost. This is all thanks to Thangs.com, which is also the sponsor of this video. I'm actually gonna show you guys how I designed my levitating toaster, which is another very iconic product for industrial designers. You guys wanna download my fan concept as well as my levitating toaster 3D file, go ahead and go to Thangs.com, register and you'll be able to download my 3D model for free. Links should be all down below. So after actually doing all those sketches, I wasn't completely happy with what I was coming up with. It just seemed like I was going to design another toaster that looked slightly different than all the rest. And so I had to really sit down and figure out how could I make this toaster special. When I was here in Target doing some research, I noticed that all of these toasters had something in common. They either had a temperature knob and these levers. So essentially how these levers work is you, all you do is you grab it and you put it down and it essentially lowers your toast. And so immediately I thought this was an opportunity for me to improve upon. What if my toaster concept didn't require a lever or a knob? How could that possibly work? How could I make it so that it didn't need a lever? I really didn't want to design just another toaster. And so this is how I came up with the idea for my levitating toaster. Toast goes down, no, toaster goes up. Alrighty designers, we are now in SolidWorks, our favorite 3D program. Okay, so this is the 3D for the levitating toaster. I finished building it. It took about six to eight hours, which was a lot faster than my fan concept. So I allow you guys to download my fan industrial design as well as this levitating toaster. All you have to do is go to thangs.com, register, put in your email address, create the account, and you'll be able to download my 3D models for absolutely no cost so thank you to Thangs for making this all happen. So I'm actually going to provide you guys the SolidWorks file itself. So if you guys have SolidWorks you can open up my file and see exactly all the features I did in order to create this fan. So I'm going to go back and move this blue bar all the way up so you guys can see the very first feature. I first started off with just a very basic extrusion. I did do a slight draft angle, meaning that it starts off smaller and then just opens up a little bit wider. Five and a half inches deep by about nine and a half inches long. It's good to always build your 3Ds to the size of how big you think it'll actually be. 
And then the next thing I did was, in order to really refine this shape, I add some variable fillets, my favorite. Regular fillets just give you a very consistent fillet, and so pretty much every industrial designer is going to have that exact same fillet in their design. So what I like to do is just add some variable fillets and some asymmetrical fillets to really give me a more unique shape. If you guys notice that the front view here, you guys can see that the walls are very straight. I really wanted the walls to be more curvy and more kind of organic and kind of more welcoming. How I'm going to actually accomplish that with the shape that we have here is I'm going to do a cut swept and essentially it's just going to curve off all of these side walls here. So as we move forward guys what I did was I ended up adding a fillet down at the bottom to make the overall shape very round. I'm very very happy with how this is turning out. So the next thing I'm going to do is starting to cut away at some of this overall body and really just adding in some of the details. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is begin separating the top from the bottom. So the top of the toaster will be its own part and then the bottom toaster will be another main part. So I went ahead and added a split line here cutting away at the top and the bottom. Right at the top here I have a different part. Since a lot of the heat is going to be escaping from these two slots, I believe that the top part here needs to be some sort of an alloy metal material other than a plastic material. I cut away at the very top here. So I ended up building out that center plate right here knowing that it's going to be metal. I'm also ended up creating the two cuts using an extrude cut and I did actually measure out the standard size of pieces of toast so that I can make sure that I measured and dimensioned these two slots uh, accordingly as well as giving it some tolerances just for a variation in toast size. And if we take a look at my final rendering here, you guys can see that this top plate is going to be metal. And so I really wanted to sell the idea that it was metal and not just by the material and the reflections of the top plate, but I also wanted to give the shape of it more of a metal type of a shape. And how I was able to really achieve that is by the details and the shapes of the ends of the two slots. Personally, I think that it kind of makes it look more like metal stamping, which is probably the procedure of how this metal plate would be manufactured in real life. How I was able to achieve all the shapes and the details is using about eight different fillets. And I think that this looks a lot more real, a lot more metal looking than say just a regular rounded rectangle. Now what I'm going to do is begin building out the rack of the toaster. Inside generally all of these toasters have some sort of a rack and I think that if my toaster didn't have that it wouldn't look as real as it really should so I'm gonna go ahead and build out this rack using some swept features duplicate it and move and pattern it all together my rack is beginning to kind of come together and so that's looking pretty good I'm pretty happy with that so now next I'm gonna go ahead and mirror it onto the other side and so I'm gonna have a piece of toast that will fill in center gap and then the next thing I'm gonna do here is begin building out the rear case Table where the toaster will receive power. Nothing too fancy. I'm going to use a swept feature and make my concept look a little more fancy and just have some visual appeal to it. So I want to go ahead and separated that part here. So now these are two different parts. I also created a chamfer and I made it black. And if you guys really take notice, you can see that I do add very, very small micro fillets on all the edges of these different parts and the reason why I do that is because when you are going into the rendering phase if you don't have these little micro fillets it's gonna not look as real as you would want it to be everything has a small edge to it no matter how precise the part was made when it does have these little edges to every single part so that you can have these small little highlights and you can really emphasize that two parts are coming together that way and it just makes your rendering look a lot more real. Here guys was I ended up building out the base of the toaster. I didn't want it to just curve completely all the way inwards. I thought that was going to be a little bit boring. This is definitely an industrial design trend where you kind of have a small base where it's very smooth to the body. I think it looks pretty nice. And then the last thing here I'm going to show you guys is how I built out this front detail of the power button surface. 
gonna be kind of like a chamfer that runs all the way around the toaster and then it kind of dips downwards and creates a whole new surface and this is what I imagine where the power button would live. It'll be more of like a touch sensitive power button so no physical push button and so let's go ahead and do that by cutting through this very first center surface here. I did an extrude cut down at the center right here and it looks very geometric so what I did was I ended up adding some fillet so that it could look a lot more rounded just like the renderings that you guys saw. Guys check out this super awesome Bugatti Devo model that I just picked up at Costco earlier today. Man this thing is freaking sweet. And this thing only cost about $15. It's amazing the things that they can make and sell for only $15 and still make a profit. I like it so much this is definitely one of my favorite cars that I ended up buying two more of them. All right, designers, I hope you enjoyed the video, though I definitely didn't show you exactly everything I did in order to build the toaster. And that's because I wanna leave it up to you guys to go ahead and go to thangs.com, register, and download my 3D model so that you can see every single little thing I did in this 3D model. Just go through the feature manager tree and you could see how I built it. I also know that a lot of you guys don't have access to SolidWorks, so what I'm also gonna do is upload the step file to things.com as well, so you can view this on almost every 3D application, free applications, or if you also have Keyshot, you can open it up in Keyshot and also view it and look at it in there. You could do whatever you want, modify it, change up the colors, change up the design of it, I don't really care as long as you guys can learn from it. And this is really all thanks to things.com, which is not just a sponsor, of this video but such an awesome platform that's allowing me to really share all of these 3d files these designs that I've created all to you guys in a very friendly and great interface so definitely just click the link down at the bottom it'll take you to things.com all you have to do is just sign up register and then you'll be able to download my 3d models for absolutely no cost so huge thanks to things for allowing me to do this for all of you guys all right if you enjoyed this video guys definitely hit the thumbs up button it really really helps me out also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and i would really recommend that you guys do because i have another one of these videos coming up showing you guys how i design another iconic product and that'll be my lamp project so that's actually one of my more simple yet very favorite designs that i've created so i'm excited to show you guys that and then also leave me a comment down below if you guys have any questions for me that is about it designers my name is jimmy design and i'll catch you in the next video peace